This week on the 302, we are at historic Rockwood Mansion, finding out what the Bringhurst and the Shipley families did for the holidays. This place is a virtual treasure trove of artifacts, and it's just going to blow your mind how gorgeous Christmas used to be back in the day. Get ready, the 302 is straight ahead. Hey there, we are at Rockwood for the holidays to learn a lot about the families that lived here, what they did for the holidays, and just to check out how gorgeous it is. We're joined now by Ryan Grover. He's going to tell us all about the family. First of all, Ryan, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having us. So tell us about the Shipleys and the Bringhurst. They were the families that lived here, right? Absolutely. So Joseph Shipley was the one who built this house and he moved in around 1854. He lived here, his sisters lived here until 1892 when the house went up for auction and his niece Sarah Bringhurst purchased it. She lived right next door and she wanted to buy the house for her son. So every holiday season you guys really do an excellent job of bringing in people to kind of give them a look at what it was like back in the day when these two families lived here. So tell us a little bit about just an overview of Coming Home. So Coming Home is an exhibition that um, the staff here crafted up around the concept or it sort of nestled into the Christmas decorations that we do every year. So the Christmas decorations, are, we have huge support from Newcastle County. We're under the sort of umbrella of Newcastle County government. So all of these little elves and workers from all over the county come and help with electrical and lighting and all these wonderful things. And inside we put together Coming Home to really emphasize the storylines of some of our folks, some of the people that he lived here at the house, about those great moments they came back from their own travels away. Um, all of those sort of moments where they brought things back here and really created the treasure house that is Rockwood with those kinds of um, just incredible travels and places that they went to. Now we're in the dining room now. We are. For Mary's dinner party. Talk mm -hmm. to us a little bit about you know, the, the things in this room. Um, so Mary was one of four siblings that lived here for, um, and Mary actually was the last Bringhurst to live here. She was in this house until she died at 100 years old in 1967. So she was definitely entertaining in this room a lot. The bring, for the Bringhurst, this space was a really, really important one. A lot of the community spent time here. And so we really wanted to do this, uh, do the space really, really proudly. The furnishings that are in here were actually established by Joseph Shipley. A lot of them are from England. A lot of them are also from Wilmington. But then we also did a lot of Christmas decorations. And then layered into that, we've been able to bring in costumes that Mary wore herself around the year 1900. This beautiful sort of uh, dark blue evening gown, which is just unbelievably amazing. And then we also put together a display of objects that she and her brother probably brought back from a really extensive cruise that they took through the Mediterranean where they stopped in places along Northern Africa and even into Israel. So we believe that some of the brass objects that we have on view were brought back from that trip in around 1920. So when you're talking about the brass items, yeah. one of them is a belt, right? Yeah, it's probably one of the most elaborate pieces of jewelry that we have in the collection, and we have a lot of the family um, jewelry. This probably would not have been worn very casually. It might have even been sort of considered kind of a costume object or something that was really sort of over the top, but it's really, really ornate and really, really fun. I really love the dress, honestly, and you have so much. You said you have so much jewelry, but you also have so many things that belong to Mary and to belong to Edith. And I mean, the family has really just been amazing and, and returning some of these things, bringing them home. Everywhere. Absolutely. And that's actually one of the big themes that we have here, um, looking at different descendants of this family that have brought antiques, clothing, jewelry, important pho photographs, all sorts of documentation back to the house that reflect back onto the uh, Shipley and the Brinkhurst families. Yeah, absolutely. We've been very generous. Yeah, looking at the table, it's really gorgeous. There's a lot of red glass throughout the house, but 
um, the table is decorated just really beautifully with red glass. Talk to me about the significance of that. There is a huge collection of it in this house. Um, and uh, this, was, uh, this was something that was really, um, you think about Victorian period and you think about jewel tones when you think about these sort of dark blues, greens, reds. It was really uh, part of that sort of visual vocabulary that people were using in the houses in the like last quarter of the 1800s, first part of the 1900s. And um, Bessie uh, Brinkhurst, um, well, and she was, uh, she, she was the oldest of the four siblings, and she married a man named Galt and lived in Ireland. And we have photographs of the castle that they lived in. And um, we have found a lot of these examples of the red glass in that castle. So we think that a lot of the red glass that's here actually came from Bessie's influence. Her husband passed away. She left Ireland. She moved back to, um, back to Rockwood in around 1922, and she brought a lot of really terrific things back with her. It really is gorgeous. But I got to tell you, I'm really enjoying Enjoying this, uh, this is the dinner menu. Um, so this isn't the exact uh, menu that you guys had. This is our, a reprint, right, of what might have been served. And how do you know these things? So we just have this enormous archive of materials. Part of it is located here. Part of it's also with University of uh, University of Delaware's library system. So there's special collections. Um, uh, there's over 5,000 photographs that were taken within the house up until about 1965. There are just boxes and boxes and boxes of information. And part of that was just sort of histories of venues and things that um, uh, sort of a history of entertaining here at Rockwood. So they found different menus and we've reprinted them and had them um, out on view. Just little touches that help to personalize the space, help to sort of uh, turn them into sort of seasonal events so when you come it's a little bit different um, uh, each time that you come it would be a little bit different and it's just sort of a way to ground people into the experience and get them to know the people who occupied this space how they used this space over the years that they entertained they loved and they lived and had a lot of fun in this house a lot of fun definitely and we're going to talk a little bit about another member of the family when we return This is Captain Jay Sapp of the Delaware State Police, 12th generation Delawarean, and I'm all about the 302. Welcome back. We're talking about coming home here at Rockwood for the holidays and a new exhibit called Coming Home. I'm joined again by Ryan Grover to talk a little bit about the second room. Now, this is the eldest Bringhurst sister. Bessie, this would exactly be, right. This would be uh, Christmas morning, right? Yeah. So the whole uh, room is set up to be sort of a demonstration of Christmas morning. Everybody's starting to open up their gifts, but this year all the gifts are supplied by Bessie, and they're all from the uh, Kilwater Castle that she and her husband had lived in in Ireland. So the whole room is filled with these Irish decorative arts that she brought back in 1922. Um, her husband had passed away. She decided that she was going to eventually move back to uh, back to Delaware, back to her home, uh, her ancestral home, and uh, she moved back in with the family here at Rockwood with her brothers and sisters. And um, she just brought a lot of things with her. She was quite the gift giver. I can imagine she's probably very popular at Christmas. You know, some of the gifts, like the purses, the purses are gorgeous. It's completely true. Yeah, uh, it's, it's the, the purses are almost one of the sort of like the most uh, sort of most magical parts of the costume collection that we have. We just have this enormous collection of these um, uh, jeweled and beaded purses, sort of uh, things that would have been used on an evening out for, uh, for dinner parties, uh, really just sort of uh, these kind of decorative embellishments that people would have been using for really sort of uh, high entertainment. Definitely. And there's also some lace. Can you talk to us a little bit? Are they like collars or what are they? One of the sort of like, uh, again, you have to sort of think about this house less as a house and more sort of like a treasure chest. And uh, there's one room here in the house that is purely a sewing room. Um, it was originally sort of a servant's quarters and then it was transitioned to this workspace where people from the family as well as the servants would have come together to create decorative trims and uh, use lace to be able to create um, uh, not only costumes but to also embellish the costumes and sort of contemporize the costumes that they already had. And so we have within that examples of Irish lace, but we have probably, I don't know, somewhere in the neighborhood of about 5,000 actual pieces of lace within this room. It's just incredible. That is really amazing. How do you keep track of it all? Everything is numbered. Everything has a little number sort of sewn into it. And we have a big inventory system and we try, try really hard to try and keep track of where things are within the house. 
And you had mentioned that these would be things that, that she would have brought back. Um, do you have like diaries or, or letters, things like that, where they describe, you know, receiving things or what she brought back? Or... Absolutely. So um, Bessie was actually almost transfixed with interior decorating. She decorated uh, Killwater Castle extensively. She kept um, sort of changing rooms on a re very regular basis. I think she was a very large entertainer. She liked to bring people into the house. So this was a real showpiece for her. But she would send these incredible letters back to her mother here at Rockwood back to her siblings and giving them advice. I just tried this at Killwater. You should try this. You should try parquet floors. You should, I'm sending you a wallpaper sample. You should exa have examples of this in your house. Um, you should use red curtains instead of green ones. I mean, she always had opinions about what to do with the house. And then when she moved here in uh, 1920, I should say in anticipation of her move here in 1922 in the 19 teens, she actually built a whole wing off the side of the house for her own private apartment. Now, you were talking about color, and I can't help but look at these gorgeous, again, the red glass, the, I guess they're like a chandelier, but I know it's a candelabra, I guess. Exactly right, yeah, and um, and we have just this huge extensive collection here. The examples that we have here in this little display around Bessie, um, we actually found exa those examples in a photograph of the interior of Kilwater Castle. So we know that she was collecting this glass while she was in Ireland, and more than likely, much of what we see here in the house was brought back with her. How long did she live? Um, at Killwater Castle, and, and where is it located? Um, I don't actually know that. I've heard that there has been a lot of uh, new, I think that it's been in the news quite a bit lately. Um, it has, uh, Killwater Castle was sold privately to a young couple that want to try and restore it, and those owners have reached out to Rockwood, and I, it sounds like we might be able to do some sort of programming together. I'm really excited about it, but I have a lot to learn, not only about Rockwood, but also about their sort of, uh, the sort of Rockwood family's uh, connections to Ireland. Well, you're have to keep the 302 posted about that for sure. Come back all the time. Definitely. <laughs> so speaking of red, this is really gorgeous. We had blue velvet in the dining room. Yes. And now we have a red velvet suit, it looks like here. And this was Bessie's suit, right? Yeah, absolutely. And um, this is actually, um, what we're looking at is not actually the, the full suit. Um, there were other components to it, but we're trying to uh, fixate on those things that were in the best condition. Um, a lot of these outfits are well over 100 years old, sometimes 120 years old. And so they're not always in the best condition, but we try and find the best examples so that we can sort of um, share them and display them. And in the meantime, we have to find funds to be able to uh, find conservators and, um, and bring a lot of these things back into, um, into their glory. Sure, sure. Now, one of the things that I know was present, but we don't see it here, would be pets. They had so many pets here, right? The whole family were completely obsessed with dogs. There were dozens and dozens. I'm not, I'm not overestimating this. Um, the Brinkhurst siblings, while they were here, had something in the neighborhood of like 70 dogs over their over their lifetime. The, and the interesting thing about it is that, so Bessie's youngest brother, Edward, he documented them. He was, he was a sort of... Um, a uh, semi-professional photographer. He documented all of these animals and these huge photo archives that he created, not only of the pets, but the interiors of the house and um, different uh, changes that they made to the garden. Over the entirety of the 1900s, that whole co collection of over like 5,000 photographs are at the UD libraries. Excellent, and we're gonna talk more about some of the treasures here at Rockwood when we return. I'm Sarah Ganter with the Rehoboth Art League. Come explore art and history with the 302. Welcome back, we're at Rockwood and we're talking about the families that lived here and how they celebrated the holidays. Ryan joins us once again. Now, we are in the foyer where everything is decked out for the holidays. And you have a lot of the original decorations from back then, don't you? Well, so yeah, the decorations started being poured into this house in the 1850s, but then every generation kept bringing more and more treasures. They were collecting well into the 1960s. So we really do have objects here that span almost 120 years. Speaking of collecting, in one of the other rooms, Joseph Shipley, you have uh, a couple of things that he collected and brought back to yeah. the house. These are some of the earliest things that were collected for the house, and they're just real, I mean, just the treasures of the treasure. I mean, they really are the jewels in the crown. Um, so Joseph Shipley, on his way to move into his new retirement villa here on the outskirts of Wilmington, um, he and his, uh, his nephew, Edward, uh, Edward Brinkhurst Jr., took the grand tour, and this is just a silly term 
um, that they started using in the 1600s for British tourists that would then go down into France and into Italy and other parts of continental Europe to study classical antiquity and to study the great masters and all these different art forms that were being produced in um, these amazing spaces. And uh, so uh, Joseph Shipley took his nephew on that trip and ended up collecting all sorts of really fantastic things like a French clock from Paris uh, from about 1840. And I think the other big thing that we have on view is this beautiful landscape of Lake Como in Italy that we know that he purchased in 1854 on his way back to Wilmington. It really is breathtaking, as is the whole house. When you come out to the foyer and you go up the stairs, Edward's room is just right at the top, is that right? Um, so Edward Bringhurst um, Jr. lived in this room, but we have a display of his son, Edward III, sometimes called Edward V for very funny reasons. Um, he, um, we have a display of his, um, when he came back from England, he was presented to King Henry V at court in around 1914. And so we have not only the royal portrait that was created to commemorate that moment, but also um, the clothing, the actual sort of presentation clothing that he wore, presentation sword, this beautiful hat, the whole thing that he wore to meet the King of England. Um, so he was so taken with this experience that he uh, supposedly came back to America and changed his name from King or from uh, Edward III to Edward V. Because the more numbers you have, the more important you are. I and also an homage to the monarch that he had met while he was in England. Yeah, that's really interesting. So super you, funny. As you walk down that hallway, you come upon a dressing room. And so this is a dressing room that's sort of attached to um, the room that's being interpreted as his sister's Mary's room. And um, we had one of his traveling trunks that we know that he was using in the 19-teens, 1920s. It has his name sort of blazoned on the side. Um, and there are all sorts of um, references to sort of cruises that he took on it. But we have it uh, look as if it's being unpacked basically within the, within the dressing room. And it was just another way to sort of fold in other interesting kinds of objects that we have here. Everybody comes to Rockwood thinking about the magnificent furniture and the paintings and these wonderful sculptural pieces and all this sort of like, you know, silver and ceramic dinnerware and just really, really great things. But we also have like clothing and traveling trunks and um, uh, dishwashers and um, just, you know, strange sort of things that, you know, you just makes you wonder why anybody collected it, but it creates this richness here about the storyline of these people's lives. Sure, sure. And if you've been here before, maybe you've seen um, Mary's bedroom. It's different now. You guys have really kind of changed everything around, added the holiday touch. So talk to us about, about Mary's bedroom, the way it's laid out now. You know, um, it's it historically been one of the most popular bedrooms in the house. Um, and a lot of that had to do with the fact that we were always displaying a lot of her clothing. We have a huge amount of Mary's clothing. Of course, she lived here until 1967. So we have decades and decades and decades of her clothing here, which is terrific. But some of the stuff had been on view for a really long time. And even though we keep the light levels really low, it's really damaging to collections. So we decided that we would put a lot of things away. And all of a sudden, everybody's attention was placed on this really fantastic furniture and all these wonderful glass ceramic things and these sort of home craft pieces that were being created by the, the sisters here. And we were able to sort of feature all of this, all of these new things. Or And sometimes they were things that had been there for a long time, but nobody was paying attention to because they were like, oh, this dress or these shoes. And so now we get to tell all these new stories. And you go from Mary's room into Edith's room and you have some, you have a relatively new um, item in Edith's room thanks to the family, right? Yeah, so Edith is of the three siblings. She is the only sibling who had children. So she left, she got married here at Rockwood. She left and she had, I believe, four kids of her own. And so their descendants are still involved with Rockwood. And funny enough, there has been an Edith in every generation since that Edith. And I think there's been now like five Ediths. And I think all of them have been involved with Rockwood in one way or another. So the wonderful things about this family is that they have just been sort of giving little pieces at a time to add to the richness of the story here. And so they've been able to donate a number of Bringhurst family pieces from the late 1700s that help to talk about the their past as a pharmaceutical company, as an early apothecary here in Wilmington, Delaware. The one thing that we have on display 
right now. And this was a recent gift um, from a descendant of Edith um, here at Rockwood is uh, what's called a spice chest or sometimes referred to as a valuables chest. I think it was made in Southeast Pennsylvania around 1800, maybe 1790. And it's just this lockable set of drawers, but it's really delicate and it's really beautiful. And it has this terrific family history. So there's always something new uh, and something old, I guess I should say, here at Rockwood. Um, we, Things are changing. As often as I can possibly change them, yeah. So if someone wants to come out and check out this exhibit or any of the exhibits that you have, what do they have to do? So we have regular guided tours every Friday and Saturday. We also have self-guided tours every Thursday through Sunday. And we always recommend that you try and get um, uh, reservations for them, but you, we take drop-ins uh, drop all the time. The really fun thing about December, though, is, well, two things. First of all, all of our tours are free. So every tour that you you take during the month of December, this is our gift back to the people. We really want people to come and enjoy this great stuff. And we are open late every weekend in December leading up to Christmas. So Holiday Open House, which is Newcastle County's big celebration, that's the first weekend. But the next two weekends, we're open from 5 to 8 p.m., both Friday and Saturday night. You come down, it's great for date night. It's great with the kids. Um, the whole park will be, be completely lit up. The entire interior will be completely lit up. And you can just sort of saunter around, have a drink and just have a really good time. It does sound like a good time. Ryan, thank you so much for spending time with us. And um, please come back as often as you can. We certainly will. Thank you. We'll be right back. For more information on the exhibits here at Rockwood, you can visit rockwood.org. That'll do it for this week's episode of the 302. We're gonna leave you now with some beauty shots of the exterior of this home built in 1854. Until next time, I'm Jackie Ferris. Tell them you saw it on the 302.